Hello friends, this video on congruence of triangles part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, when we talk about congruence of triangles, we see that the moment you talk about two triangles which are congruent, like in this case, these are the two triangles. So I have taken the same two triangles as were there in the last slide, just that I have named them. So the first triangle is named ABC, the second triangle is named DEF. Yeah. Now, what have we observed? We observed that in order to overlap these two triangles, if you place this triangle as it is over this triangle, do you think that they will cover each other exactly? No. In order to cover each other exactly, you need to rotate this triangle. So the moment you rotate this triangle in the clockwise direction, what happens? You bring it to the same orientation at the, as that of this triangle. Right? And what is that same orientation? Maybe you rotate it in this fashion such that the triangle is in this pattern. Let's say if this is A, B, C, you rotate, when you rotate it in an orientation like this, D, E, F. So only then you see that the two triangles, they exactly cover each other. So what does that mean? That means that there are certain points. That, that means there are vertices of the triangle which are corresponding to each other. For example, A and D are corresponding vertices. Similarly, B and E are corresponding vertices. C and F are corresponding vertices. So basically what we are trying to say is they are not equal. There is no equality basically, but the, the role which the vertex A plays in triangle ABC is the role which vertex D plays in triangle DEF. So vertex A is in correspondence with vertex D. Similarly, vertex B is in correspondence with vertex E. In the same way, vertex C is in correspondence with vertex F. So this is the concept of correspondence. So whenever two triangles are congruent, so their corresponding parts will be equal. Now it is not only the corresponding parts is not only with regards to the vertices. It is also with regards to the sides and the angles. For example, what would be the corresponding angle of angle A? So the corresponding angle would be angle D. Similarly, the corresponding angle for angle B would be angle E. The corresponding angle for angle C would be angle F. Now the challenge, now when you look at these two figures, it is very easy to say that okay, corresponding angle of angle B would be angle E. But the challenge comes when, when you have your triangles in this fashion. So when you have it in this fashion, the corresponding angle for angle A is actually this angle, which is angle D. So you actually need to identify that in which orientation of the triangle, the two triangles are overlapping each other. So only considering that orientation, you will be able to find the corresponding parts of the two triangles. And how do we represent the correspondence? So correspondence is represented using this symbol. So uh, uh, the symbol of a line basically where you have arrows on both sides. So how do we represent? Let's say in, in this particular example, we say that angle A corresponds to angle B. Similarly, angle B corresponds to angle E. Angle C corresponds to angle F. So this is about the correspondence of angles. Similarly, the sides would also be corresponding to each other. So for example, the side AB will correspond to which side? This side AB will correspond to the side DE. Similarly, side AC will correspond to side DF. Similarly, BC would correspond to EF. So these are the corresponding sides of the two congruent triangles. And what about the corresponding vertices? The corresponding vertices would be A corresponds to D, B corresponds to E and C corresponds to F. So these are the corresponding vertices. So anytime two triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts would also be equal. Right? That means their corresponding sides or their corresponding angles. So they should also be equal. In fact, these corresponding sides or angles only decide whether two triangles will be congruent or not. And how do we represent congruence? 
congruence is represented using this symbol where you have the equality sign and on top of that equality sign you have a curve like this so if i want to say in this case that triangle abc and triangle def are congruent how do we write this we write it like this triangle abc is congruent to triangle def so these are these are basically two new symbols that you have learned one symbol is for correspondence and the other symbol is for congruence thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you